Hello and welcome to everyone else who's joining us either live or on demand on our uh, TI webinar series, um, the last one uh, live for semester one. Um, and we are doing an introduction to Lua programming with Dr. Stephen Arnold. Um, my name is John Bayman. Uh, I teach mathematics to year seven to 12 students at the Lachlan Catholic College here in Darwin, where it's cooling down a bit here. Um, and I um, use this technology to help students make stronger connections in their understanding of mathematics. I've been having a lot of fun recently using the, the TI Europa, which um, hopefully I'll explain in, in future webinars. But more importantly for now, we're on to, uh, to Lou, and I'd really like to introduce um, our very important um, presenter and, and person who is very knowledgeable on TI technology, and that's Dr. Stephen Arnold. Good evening, Stephen. Hello, John. Hello, all. As you can see, Stephen is a very talented mathematician. He's a teacher, lecturer, and a technology guru. I would call him Mr. TI Australia, uh, but I think this is a bit of an understatement. Uh, as he is uh, well respected around the world, um, and TI over the years uh, have regularly sought his knowledge and advice. Um, does that be okay, Steve? I was going to say TI Australia, TI the world, or not quite? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, TI Australia is where the, uh, the the first love is. That's very nice, and, and I'm glad to hear that too. Well, thank you for joining us this evening, Steve. I look forward to uh, to seeing what you have to share with us, and I know that you are. Um, an expert on Lua, so I'm looking forward to, to learning a few new things. Uh, why don't we finish seeing my screen, and we'll pass over to Steve, so we can learn a bit about Lua, and how we can implement that into our teaching, and uh, using it with TI technology and the I Inspire. All right. Thanks very much, John. Um, now, can you see my screen at this stage? I certainly can, I want a lovely backdrop too. Yes, yes. We were, um, a couple of months ago, we were in Tas Tasmania and uh, doing the, um, the lovely Three Capes Walk, which uh, was, uh, yeah, yeah, beautiful few days walking. Um, okay, what you should see on the screen is the, um, the TI Inspire software. I'm going to use the software tonight. Um, Lua scripts uh, run beautifully in TI Inspire uh, on all their platforms, uh, the handheld, the desktop software, and the iPad app. Um, however, you can only create and edit those scripts generally on the software. Uh, and this offers one of the benefits of Lua uh, in that students on the handheld can use the scripts that you create as a teacher but they can't edit them and they can't break them. Um, I first, when I first started tinkering with Lua, it's about eight or nine years ago, when it was added to the Inspire platform. And um, I knew that it was a, um, a, a full-fledged computer language. Uh, it's similar to languages like Python and even JavaScript. Um, it's a scripting language. Um, it was developed in the 90s, and um, uh, its, uh, its main attributes were for TI to include it. It was free. They didn't have to pay for it. That was a big plus. It was fast. Um, on the handheld, they needed a, a language that could run well on handheld as well as powerful computers. And it was also light in terms of its memory requirements. So it was an ideal language to include. Um, I'm going to assume that you know nothing about Lua as such, and maybe not even knew that uh, it was part of Inspire. Um, so that's, that's my assumption. I'll, I'll try and explain everything from scratch. If you're familiar with Inspire, you'll know that it comes with a handful of what we call apps, so calculator, graph screen, lists and spreadsheet, and so on. Effectively, Lua adds an additional app to Inspire. So you can, you can insert a new page or a new window. The difference is, while the other apps are clearly defined, a calculator, a graph screen, if you add Lua, you add almost anything you can imagine. 
and that's that's very powerful. So when we were first starting to play around with Lua, a friend of mine, a teacher, had developed a um, um, a student activity that involved exploring the relationship between uh, the slope and tangents and secants on, on a curve. And they'd used, uh, obviously, the graph screen for that that you can see, and they'd used a notes page uh, dynamically linked to the, um, uh, the coordinates and the information on the screen. Now, notes is a wonderful, wonderful tool, but the trouble is they kept finding, as soon as they handed the document to the students, all students had to do was click in the math box window on the notes page, either accidentally or intentionally, and they could break it. And so all that hard work that they, the teacher had put in to develop these wonderful worksheets, they spent, students were spending a lot of time with their hands in the air because they kept breaking it. Now, the beauty of Lua is I replaced, as one of my first projects was to see if I could do this. So I replaced the notes window with a Lua window. And as you can see, unlike notes or pretty much any other Inspire app, I can click anywhere I like on this, nothing happens. But it is dynamically linked to the page and uh, gives them the feedback. But as I mentioned at the start, students on their handhelds have no way to go into this part of the document. They can't get in there. Now that's a plus uh, if you're developing activities and worksheets for your students. But as a teacher, you want to be able to get in and do, do stuff to create, to edit. For that, you need the software. So whether you're on, and all the software works, whether you're on student software, teacher software, a navigator software, you'll know that there are a couple of insert menus on whichever software you're on. Um, and you may have gone as far as the program editor, which use, is the control of the TI basic programs. Below it, you'll find the script editor. Now, this is where you do your Lua magic. So if I wanted to have a look at the script that's doing this, I'd go down to script editor and I'd go into edit script. Okay. That opens the, um, the script editor and you see the, um, the script is there and, and quite ready to be edited and changed. Now, you'll see it goes on a bit. And in fact, it, uh, most scripts, uh, if you go and have a look at them, you might get a bit frightened uh, because they, they seem to be enormous. But we're going to start very simple tonight, and the plan is to give you a little taster of um, uh, programming, uh, of scripting in Lua, and to see that it is actually quite accessible. Um, so, I mean, this is in a way a very simple example of, of using Lua. You may have seen in the last few years all sorts of amazing um, documents starting to come out. You know, all the STEM behind activities coming out of uh, uh, the US. Um, all of these are done in Lua. So things like this are um, obviously very, very complicated and uh, we don't expect uh, beginners to get to this standard anytime soon. However, uh, for teachers looking to develop simple activities and uh, more interesting and dynamic things for their students, uh, Lua can be a very, um, a very powerful tool for the classroom. Now, I'm just going to refer you to my web page, and uh, John will send the link to this out. Uh, if you like what you see, if, if you think that there's something from tonight that you want to go a little bit further, then the beaut part is we don't just have this hour together. Uh, what you've got is if you go to the tutorials link, you'll see that there is um, actually now we're into the 40s. In fact, recently added uh, scripting lesson 49. Uh, the last 
few of those are on scripting for the innovator. Before that, scripting for Bluetooth. If you're using the iPad, uh, the Inspire app on iPad is Bluetooth capable. So you can do all sorts of amazing things. Now again, don't be scared by uh, and think, oh, look, I don't have the time to go through 49 um, tutorials. It's, uh, it's very much, each of these is, is quite short, uh, probably take you 10 minutes to work through, um, and uh, meant to be a very gentle introduction. So uh, the idea is within a few of these, you should be able to start creating perhaps simple quiz documents for your students. Um, and when you have the time and the interest, you can, you can go on and do more powerful things. Again, a little taster of what's possible. Back on the Compass Tech homepage, you'll see next to Lua scripting, there's tutorials and examples. Now the examples page uh, is certainly not all that's out there with Lua, but it does give a bit of a taste of the breadth um, and power of what's possible. So, um, you know, from the very first of these, which is a a document which can be used equally to control the Innovator Hub or Bluetooth on the iPad. Um, Prob Sim, probability simulations, a little objects gallery, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, did you know on the iPad that uh, it can create and read QR codes? An interesting way to for students to share information and uh, data in the classroom. So all sorts of interesting and powerful documents. Now, all of these are readily downloadable. And as you saw a minute ago, you can go into any one of them and look at the script and, uh, and have a play. I mean, I'm, I'm not a programmer. I did a one semester course on Fortran 40 years ago. And that's the extent of my programming knowledge. So I'm self-taught. When I started to play with Lua, when TI first added it to, um, to the Inspire, I thought like most people, well, this is one for the programmers. Obviously, uh, normal, normal people like, like you and me, uh, we won't be doing this. But after a little bit of a play, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I started to get the feel that maybe we could do more. And what I did then was to start to document my own learning experience. And that's where these tutorials came from. As I taught myself new things, I created a web-based um, uh, tutorial uh, that went step by step. So if this is something you're interested in doing, then uh, I'd, I'd recommend that you uh, come and have a play. I'll mention a couple of other things while, while I think of it before we get started. One is that um, the um, Lua is also able to be run in all sorts of different places. And one of these is actually on um, in a web page. So these are the same sorts of uh, scripts that I'm using uh, in TI Inspire documents, but um, uh, they're actually running in the web page, which is fairly cool. And um, the other thing I want to mention is uh, a document, a TI-inspired document developed by a gentleman in Europe, Nadriel Fenner, uh, called TIDE, TI Development Environment. Now I said at the start, and I said a couple of times that the power, part of the power of Lua is that it can't be edited on the handheld or the iPad. Well, if you start to play with Lua, you'll, you'll quickly discover that for people with Lua, almost anything becomes possible. So this guy worked out that he could create a document where there was a page that looked like a notes page. It's not, it's actually a Lua text page text box, and if you type your script into here and go to the next page, it picks that script up and runs it. And what this means is that students 
uh, if you wanted your students on their handhelds to be doing some scripting with Lua, this becomes possible. The same on the iPad. Now, like the Lua running in the web page, this is a little more limited than the full thing, naturally, but uh, it is sufficient to give uh, the, the option for students on handhelds and iPads to start to learn uh, Lua programming. And I know there's a strong focus at the moment on TI Basic, especially with respect to STEM and Innovator and things like that, and that's great. But for some students, TI Basic won't be enough for very long. Uh, and even when, if you have senior students uh, who've had a play with TI Basic, if they want a taste of a scripting language that's closer to what they'll encounter in the real world, then Lua becomes a very, very good option for them. Okay, well, let's have a look. What I've done, and I'll, again, I'll jump, sorry about this jumping back. Uh, that's right, the last thing I wanted to mention in the intro, on the tutorials webpage, the first thing you'll come to is three videos. Now, I did these a couple of years ago for TI Europe. Similar to what we're doing tonight, in fact, the first video covers a lot of the same ground uh, as we've got tonight, but then videos two and three take the whole idea further. It's all things that are covered in the tutorials, but in many respects and for many people, seeing it in, uh, in video form is, a, is uh, a better introduction and makes the tutorials that much easier to, um, to understand. So if you have, again, the time, the patience, the inclination, you might like to um, watch those videos. I will apologize uh, in advance. Because it was for a European audience and I'm an Aussie, I was given instructions to speak slowly. And I think I took it a bit too much to heart. Um, so it's, um, it's a bit painful in parts. More to the point, what you'll find on this below the videos are these documents that I've been pointing to. The one I'm about to use, my first Lua script, the tied version of that, which can be used for handheld and iPad, the function changer document, and the objects gallery. So um, if you're, again, if you wanted to have a play with these things, this is where you can go and collect them at any time. I guess I've mentioned the objects gallery a couple of times and um, The whole idea of the objects gallery is to not um, reinvent the wheel. So I found I was, when I was developing uh, Lua scripts for classroom documents, certain things I kept using over and over, things like buttons and sliders, drop down menus, um, start and reset buttons, all those sorts of things. So after a while, I decided I'd put together a document that took each of these in turn. And if you're developing a document, you can copy and paste the code for these uh, instead of having to invent them yourself. So the objects gallery um, has a wide range of, uh, of different objects that can be used to, um, to do all sorts of cool things. So, uh, okay, that gives you a little bit of an overview Let's now have a look at our first Lua script. Now the opening page is a bit of a, um, uh, you'll see that it's, the text is actually following the mouse. And we'll see how to do that in just a few minutes. So I designed this document basically to use with a live audience and to have them working with me at each stage. So we start very, very simple. We'll put some text on the page. So here's, this one's a Lua page. You see, there's no, no lines, nothing we can click on. I'm going to insert script editor, editor, edit script. And there, there's our, um, there's our script for what we see in front of us. I've defined a variable called input. It's a, it's a string, it's my first page. I then have a function. 
This function is called onPaint, and you'll find it in just about every Lua script ever written because this is what, this is what paints onto the screen. The command, the key command here is draw string. The GC uh, is a, look, it's a placeholder. It stands for graphics context. Um, I've never gone further with it. Uh, it. It always goes in there and precedes any of the graphics commands. We'll see a couple of those in the next few minutes. Now look at the, the uh, syntax of this, draw string, input 030. So um, that's pretty self-explanatory. And we're able to quite easily change this and then set the script and you'll see it updates immediately. Now when I'm doing with this, this with a live audience, I then set them the task of try and put the text in the middle of the page. And it, it's a good activity. Um, it keeps them out of mischief for a, a little while. Um, but it, it's important that it stresses and points out a really important factor. If you're going to create documents for your students to use, uh, you've got to be aware that pages are different sizes. So what you see there is a handheld page and the position 160, 150 uh, is quite a different spot than in computer view. Computer view and iPad view are generally very similar, but um, it does mean that if you want your students to be able to use your carefully created document, whether they're at home or at school, whether they're on, on a handheld or iPad, then you've got to factor that in. Now, how do we do that? Let's have a look at this next one. Straight away, it's starting to look a little bit more interesting. All right, now we start with a couple of extra variables, W and H. W is platform window width, H is platform window height. And what that does, as the name implies, it measures the width and height of the page. That then gives you the tools you need to be able to place your text. Now the on paint command's looking a little bit more complicated too, but we'll see that there's nothing too horrible in there. So we see again, uh, graphics commands, there's one called set font. It has three arguments, serif or sans serif. You see serif is like um, scripting. Um, let's see the difference. If I make it sans serif. Now as a rule of thumb, if you're using the handheld for the small screen, uh, sans serif is a better choice because uh, the serif tends to get a bit um, can be a bit confusing in, when, it's, uh, when it's visible. The I for italic, you can see that. Uh, we can change that to B for bold. We can then change to B, I, the I for bold, italic. We'll just R for the regular. And this one, now this one is your, um, font size. Again, point to note, on the handheld, the maximum allowable font size is 24. On computer screen and on iPad, there is no limit to the maximum font size. It means if you're writing for handheld or for the other platforms, and I always, whenever I've taught people to use Lua, I've always stressed that it's in your own best interests to write your scripts so that they run everywhere. A lot of people I found at the start were writing scripts uh, that were precisely tailored to fit just on the handheld screen. And I don't think that's, that's acceptable. Um, uh, we, we have a powerful platform and if you're gonna go to the trouble to create a document, it should run well everywhere. Now the next line, set color RGB. 
RGB, red, green, blue. So if we change the, um, the colours, then the uh, you've got millions of colours. Now that's another great advantage that you have with Lua that you don't have with TI Basic. Basic and TI Inspire uh, platform has a limited number of colour range. Lua is not limited in that way. You've got 256 uh, times 256 times 256 uh, options. What's the next one? String width and string height. Get string width of input, get string height of input, and then we draw the string again. Now, if I wanted to put that in the middle, well, that's a little bit of mathematics. Because what I, I guess what I'd want to do would be the width over two and the height over two. Wouldn't you think? Mm, not so much. Obviously, what we need to factor in would be the string width over two. And uh, Lewis maths is pretty good. You can do it a couple of different ways. Now you can do the same with the height, but generally I find that um, there's an additional argument here for middle. You can also put top. So the top of the uh, text aligns with the middle of the page or bottom. That means the bottom of the text aligns with the middle of the page. Now, just a, um, a math consideration here. Suppose you want to put a fraction on your page. Well, the numerator we would just set as bottom. The denominator would set as top. We put them in the same X position uh, and put a line in between. So um, got some nice little shortcuts that you can take with Lua. All right. Now this page is where we start to get organised. Start to look like we know what we're doing. I didn't I didn't mention in the last one the use of local. Now if you've got if you've tinkered with any sort of programming, you probably know that there are local variables and there are global variables variables. So local generally tends to say within a function, I can define a variable uh, that's local that only really exists within that function. A global variable exists everywhere. Funnily enough, and this is a bit of a, a, a tweak, um, if I define uh, these global variables as local, they're local to the whole of the script and it runs faster than if I leave them. So if I don't put the word local, that works fine, but they're now global variables and a script this size will not make any difference, but um, as soon as your script starts to get lengthy, and they will, uh, it can slow things down. So don't worry too much about the technicalities. Um, just look at the ideas here. So we're defining some variables that will be able to be used everywhere in the script. And the first one I, I've defined is a variable I'm just calling screen, so I don't have to keep typing platform.window. So when I do the width and the height, instead of platform.window width and platform, it becomes screen width and screen height and makes more sense to me. I've defined one called F size or file size, set that as 24. Defined a couple start X and start Y my starting positions, and an input my first page. Now, let's have a look at what we've introduced a new function. As well as our on paint, here's a new function called on resize. Now, this is a really important function because when you first open this page, it starts at the top, it runs these things, it will always run on resize once, 
and then it runs on paint all the time that you're there. But the thing is, if you're on the computer, your page can resize. The computer screen's, in fact, the only place in Inspire where that's possible. You think about it, the handheld screen doesn't resize, nor does the iPad screen, unless you split it into smaller windows. But on resize is a very useful uh, type of command because uh, it means if, if it does change size, it's going to recalculate W and H. So if I resize my window, W and H get recalculated and it keeps up. If I didn't have that there, then it would only have the original W and H when the page was first created. So again, a little bit technical, but um, pretty sensible. The name says it all. On resize, it's going to do these things. So it'll recalculate the screen width and height. Here's something a bit cool. The font size, I've linked to the height of the page. Now there's lots of ways you can do this, but I've said, look, take the height of the page, divide it by 15, add a half, and get the floor of that function. That just gives it a, uh, turns it into a whole number. If that doesn't work, and this is a lovely thing about Lua, if that has throws a problem for some reason, it's got all 24. So in other words, if something causes that bit to break, it'll still put 24 in. It now says, let the font size be less than 24, and it's okay, it'll be font size. Um, if not, then it'll be, it'll be, fine. it'll be the new one. Uh, it's also got to be greater than seven on the handheld. So these are all handheld considerations. They, they make sure that you don't accidentally set a font size that's too big for the handheld. It also sets up your start X and start Y in their new positions if it's resized. So okay, it's same as we had before. We set our font, we set our color, and we put it smack in the middle. So what if we wanted to put that down the bottom right-hand corner of the screen? Well, I guess instead of starting in the middle, we'd start at whatever number is the width of the screen, which we know is W. We'd also then come back the width of the text. All right. Putting it down the bottom would be the height of the screen minus the height of the text. And now I hope you, you started to see some of the ways that you can you can make sure that no matter whether you're in handheld view or computer view, your pages are going to look exactly the same. The spacing of text and objects will be will be kept kept the same. So you do it all in terms of proportions. Um, Okay, let's have, oops, sorry. Hmm. Right. Now, this one is a bit like the first one. Here we're going to introduce another Lua command. We're only going to do about half a dozen commands in this session. Let's see what's new here. As we saw before, we've invented a variable called screen. We have WH, start X, start Y, on resize, all the same. Hold on, this bit's new. We've put in one called on mouse up. Now, on mouse up looks at whatever the X and Y coordinates are when the mouse comes up. It then sets those to start X and start Y. And those are where your text is going to appear. So in other words, if I click here, it puts the text there and so on. Now, there's three mouse commands. Pretty common sense. There's on mouse up, on mouse down, 
and they work very similar. But suppose you've got a button and you want it to behave slightly differently when you press the mouse down, so it maybe change color, and then when you press the mouse up, it actually carries out the instruction of the button. So that's why we have those. But the other cool one is one called mouse move. Now here, we see that the, um, the text will actually follow the, follow the mouse. So you've got nice control over your objects. All right, and our last bit of it, introducing new objects is this one. A little bit of graphics. The first part should look familiar now, although our input this time is an empty string. I haven't said anything yet. We've got on resize. I've added on escape key. That's really handy because what it does, it clears whatever's in input and it does on resize again. Puts everything back the way it was. I often use on resize as a reset and I often link it to escape key. So if I put that down there and press escape, it puts it back where it was, was in the start. Now, the next bit we won't spend too much time on. Again, if you want to know more about these things, they're explained very slowly and gently in the tutorials. But this command, if touch and touch enabled, this is for the iPad. So if you think about it, in an iPad, um, the keyboard only comes up when you're actually in a text type situation. When you click somewhere that you can type text, now, there's nowhere on this page to do that. So we build in a, a basically a, a, a section of the screen here at y is less than 0.25 of h. In other words, if you if you click anywhere in the top quarter of the screen, if the keyboard is visible is not visible, then make it visible, else hide it. So in other words, if you're on the iPad and you want to type something. You just click up here in the top part of the screen and you can, up will come the keypad and um, we'll get the, uh, you can start to type. Now the typing magic happens down here, a command called on char in or character in. And it takes whatever input is and adds the last character. So if I press capital T, Input becomes uh, what input was a minute ago, which was just an empty string, and adds that capital T to it. I can keep typing. This is my text. The other half is the backspace key, and it just basically takes whatever the length of input is and reduces it by one character each time. So you can type or, um, or delete text. Or as we mentioned, if you hit the escape key, it clears the text and puts everything back. Steve? Yeah, John. A couple of questions have come in. Um, everyone's enjoying it so far, so this is great. Uh, there's a couple of questions. One was, uh, are these functions, the mouse up and mouse down, are they inbuilt functions? Yes. All of these are inbuilt in the Lua, in Lua that's um, embodied in Inspire. So um, uh, all of the functions that we're, we're typing in are, um, are built-in functions, yep. Now and you can go ahead and define new functions, yep. No, go on, sorry. You can go ahead and define new functions, of course. Um, all of the ones that we've defined so far have all been inbuilt functions. Yep, great. And Oop. the second one is, I think somebody was trying to sort of go back and follow it from the start, they're using Navigator, uh, which we know mm -hmm. is, for, for this is no different, but they, they were struggling to find where the Lua script page was. Can you just go back and show that again, please? Yes. Uh, if you're, let's insert a new document, we'll make it handheld size. Now, this will be familiar to you. These, you can add calculator, etc. You can even add a program editor but there's no script editor in this. You have to go to the insert menu. 
So there's an insert menu on this menu bar. There's also an insert menu at the top menu bar. Whether you're on Windows or Mac, it's the same. And then for each of those, you'll see the script editor down the bottom of the insert menu. And if I want to insert a script, if there's not one there, then I, ins I choose insert script. It will actually ask for a title of the script. You can call it whatever you want. Press enter and you've got yourself a blank script uh, re page ready to go. So uh, you can copy and paste some of the things that we've been doing or type yourself and then click set script and that will make it happen. So I hope that, hope that helps. That's great, thanks Steve. Okie doke. All right, now, at this part of the game, I wanted to talk about linking Lua to the outside world of Inspire. So Lua is what people in the business call, it lives in a sandbox. Uh, it's, it's protected um, and it protects the, the outside environment. Um, the only way that Lua can talk to Inspire and Inspire can talk to a Lua script is using variables. Okay, so I've created a, a, a graph page here and I've put a point on the graph page. I clicked coordinates and equations on the point and then I stored uh, the coordinates to a variable called px and py. So as you see, as I move the point around, px and py change. Up here, let's see how that's happening. Now this script's starting to look much scarier, but only because it, it includes more bits. Most of the bits we're already familiar with. So the start, this very opening line, platform API level, as they've added new functionality to Lua, um, they've had to, so when it started, it was API level 1.0. And that was uh, about nine years ago. Each, about every six months or so, uh, six or 12 months, they've added new features and you get an increase in this API level. We're now up to 2.8. 2.8 adds all the innovator um, commands to our Lua um, database. So when we, we've now got all these innovator control commands that we can write into Lua scripts. Um, 2.5 added Bluetooth commands and so on. So uh, if you don't specify your API level, then it will automatically um, choose the, the current one, the latest one. Now the next little bit that's new is this bit here. VAR is a, obviously related to variables and VAR.monitor means it's listening for a variable called PX. It's listening for a variable to a variable called PY. Those are variables outside the Lua script. Think about this, this page here as in a box and you know, like the graph screen is outside that box. So this is real Inspire, if you like, normal Inspire, and this is the Lua screen. And the only way those two worlds can communicate is using variables. So if the Lua uh, script is monitoring px and py, there's a function called on var change. And that means that if either of those variables change, then it runs this function. And what that does is redefined a variable called px and py in the Lua script. It recalls what, it goes and checks what current value px is, and what current value py is, and then it redoes input, which is now what you see there, the coordinates. So every time this point changes and those variables change, this gets updated. And that's why this is happening. On resize, it, uh, it just sets up the, the starting points of the screen. It also uses the third var um, command. 
So VAR monitor, VAR recall, recalls from the outside world, VAR store stores a new value into PX out here. So what does that mean? It means if I'm on the Lua's, Lua window and I press my escape key, it's going to run resize, it's going to set PX to 1 and PY to 1. Just like that. So in this way, the Lua script can pick up information from outside in Inspire World and it can also, did you see that when I pressed escape, it not only changed this, it stored new values into that, so it's that. So it's a two-way communication, that's very powerful. Now there's another feature of Lua that I love, arrow key. So if you've, if you've used a handheld a lot, you'll know that one of the painful parts of using it tends to be trying to grab a point uh, or, a, or any object um, on the Inspire screen and move it around. In Lua, you can add an arrow key command, the left, right, up and down. And that means that if I use the arrows on my computer or if I was running this on the handheld, just use the left and right, up and down arrows, then they can be used to control your script. Now this points us back to this very first one that I created all those years ago. And one of the things I wanted to do was to make it easier for students to be able to grab and move that point. They don't have to go and go onto the graph page and press the grab button and hold it down. They just use left and right on the, uh, on the trackpad to control that graph page. So these are some of the real advantages of, of creating documents using Lua. It makes it easier for the students to use and it makes it secure so the students can't break, they can't get in and break it. Um, and uh, that opens up all sorts of powerful teaching and learning possibilities. Look, um, this one here. Steve? Yeah. Uh, just a question, if you don't mind, going back to the sure. rectangle one that you had. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked, is there an easy way uh, to dilate the rectangle? Oh, yes. Sorry, I didn't spend much time. I should have mentioned that. So we added the new graph GC command, a new graphics command called draw rect. And the way this works is X and Y are basically the top left corner and the next two are the width and height of the rectangle. Okay. Now, I'm glad you pulled me back on this one because it's lovely. Change draw rect to fill rect and you've colored your rectangle in. Uh, there's also one called draw arc and um, let's not get and fill arc so you can do circles ellipses rectangles quite easily um, so the the graphics capability of uh, of Lua is, um, is very simple but very powerful so if people want to find out, like if they have an idea of what they want to undo and they're like that uh, fill rec, for example, if, they, if yes. they didn't know that you were going to tell them, is there a page where they can find all of those different syntaxes and um, sort of inbuilt programs? I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> Thanks, John. If you go to the scripting tutorials off the Compass Tech homepage, so the tutorials, you'll see, and I, I added this sometime later because of this, for each tutorial, I actually list what commands are added, introduced in that tutorial. So if you're particular, if you want to know about um, drawing rectangles and polygons and things like that, you can scroll down until you get to the one that says draw line, fill rect, fill polygon and so on. Um, you may need to work back a bit for it to make sense, but um, it's all laid out there. So all the commands are um, put in there. 
Great. Thanks, Steve. Okay. All right. Um, in the last couple of minutes, I had an idea for something a little bit different. This document is um, probably worth you downloading and uh, playing with because it, it does lead you through uh, fairly gently. But I, I've just recently added uh, something new. And um, now, let's see if I can do this. What I've got is uh, I'm about to hook up Get this right. Come on. Right. Screen mirroring. No. Nope. I've got an innovator hub here. Right. Now, that's a bit dark. Let's see if we can improve that. Not by much. Move iPad. Oh, I don't want panorama. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, God. Photo. Right. Now, if I connect Innovator Hub, To this page. What you should see happening is that this is controlling the, um, the color of the LED on the Innovator Hub. It's also controlling the color of the the screen. This is a little window to show you the, the same color, the RGB. This is just a notes page with three uh, sliders and uh, I include the, the innovator command send set color red, green, blue. There's red, there's green, there's blue. And what you should be starting to think about is I'm going to turn the picture off now because it's just going to distract you and me and uh, right. How did we do that? Well, we've actually done it with a very simple little script. I started by defining variables red, green, blue and I grabbed these from outside these are the uh, the variables that are on the sliders. So recall red, recall green, and blue. I'm monitoring those. So anytime one of those changes, it'll grab the new value. I have it on resize, and I've got a paint. Now have a look at the paint command. Again, it just checks that red, green, and blue have values. Set the color to red, green, blue, and then fill the rect from zero zero, which is the top left-hand corner of the screen, across whatever the width is, and height H. So in other words, color in the whole of the, the whole of the window, whatever that color is. Now this Lua script isn't saying anything to the Innovator Hub. There are commands that, you, uh, that are included in the tutorials to show you how to do that, but I've achieved that same result by simply sticking this command into a, a notes um, math box. So it's grabbing these variables also and sending them to the, to the Innovator Hub. So we see how easily Lua can work together with not just graph screens, dragging points around on a graph screen, but even things like the Innovator. Uh, and at that point, I think we've I've probably either inspired or confused you sufficiently uh, for the uh, for the time being. Um, I'm very happy and have been since I put those tutorials up. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to drop me an email. Okay, 
Um, steve at compasstech.com.au. I have a number of email addresses, most of them work, but um, that one will get you straight through and I'm more than happy to hold your hand. If you want to learn more about Lua, I would love to hold your hand while you do that. So um, don't hesitate to drop me a line. Uh, Sanjeev, I think I just saw a message from you. Uh, yes, the um, single quotes and the double quotes are interchangeable in, uh, in Lua. Um, were there any other questions before we finish? Not that I can see at the moment, Steve, but if you monitor the chat window as we start wrapping things up, uh, then you mm -hmm. can perhaps um, answer those as we go. And I think, yeah. like you said, there's, there's so much that you can do. Uh, all you got to do is just get started, um, and, and from there, you know, you really can fly. Just scratch the surface, just get started, like you said, on your, on your, your page. Just you know, go to Lewis Scripting, just start um, with one of those Lewis Scripting tutorials and then just take it from there. Yep. So that, that's fantastic. That's right. um, yeah. And the nice thing is because we have uh, this uh, on demand as well as, as a webinar that people can watch this again and, and perhaps do it at a, you know, a different pace if they need to stop it and just you know, a different pace if they need to stop it and just make sure that they're on the same page with it. So. Um, that was fantastic, Steve. Thank you very much indeed for, uh, for sharing. That was an, an all on your own for, for a whole hour. Um, thank you very much. I hope you didn't sort of feel too lonely there when you're doing it. Look, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I wish I, I could have seen people's faces so I knew whether I was <laughs> bore, boring you or, um, or inspiring you, but um, uh, maybe it's better that I couldn't. But um, thanks very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. And thank you so much, John, for organising it. It was a real pleasure. My, my absolute pleasure. So, as I already mentioned, we will begin uh, wrapping things up. If you do any last-minute questions, send them now uh, in through the chat window. Steve, I'll either answer them by typing or um, we'll say them verbally in a minute. So please um, try to do that. And if not, you can answer them when we'll, I'm sure that um, they'll be we're planning for future webinars and they may involve uh, some more Lua scripting um, and Steve involved again. Uh, when you do leave tonight, uh, there will be a brief survey which will automatically appear here in your browser. Your feedback does guide us as we plan for future online events. Uh, we do listen to your feedback, so we do hope you share your thoughts in a post-webinar survey, and we, we pass those on to Steve. Um, so please do that um, and add any comments that you can. Uh, your certificate of attendance will also be emailed to you in the next 48 hours, along with a link, and I've already shared this with you, but I'm showing you again, the link to our on-demand and YouTube version of the recording, as well as any relevant documents that Steve will then uh, attach to the webinar. After we leave tonight, if you do need some post-webinar follow-up, please feel free to phone or email TI Australia. I know they'd love to hear from you. I know that they are there to support you um, and put you in touch with people like myself, uh, but more importantly, people like Steve who can help you with things like Lua. Um, and sadly, that brings us to the end of tonight's webinar. Uh, thank you very much, Steve, for spending the, uh, the evening with us and sharing some of your, um, your knowledge of Lua. Really appreciate it. So as I said, great pleasure, John, and I'm happy to, um, to, to do it again any time. And I think you're right. I think that's the, the really nice thing about not only uh, the trainers in Australia um, and the teachers around Australia that use TI technology, but um, around the world um, that are always willing to share. It's not about you know, individuals. It's about everyone learning from each other, and you can see that on the website, and, and you see it in the activities that are available, and, and websites like yours, Steve, so thank you very much. Um, and equally, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, we do it for you, so hopefully you found it useful, whether you're uh, with or joined us live or whether you're watching On Demand, and hopefully we'll see you back online again soon. So, Steve, thank you. Good night, and good night, everyone. Have a, a great evening. Thanks, John. Good night, everyone.